All right, so today we're talking about Search Webmaster, just like every week, every Friday. Um, got some different get, different people with us, um, and some uh, regulars. Uh, let's see. Let's start us off here. We got uh, uh, Barry. Barry, you want to introduce yourself? Say who you are and what you're with. Uh, Barry Schwartz. I uh, write at Search Engine Roundtable and Search Engine Lab. I like SEO. Sweet, Baruch. I. Uh... I'm located in Toronto, and I run a local SEO company. Sweet. Eric? Eric Wu, um, lead SEO at Buzz Media and former lead SEO of eHow.com. Uh, myself, Matt Storms. Um, I'm one of the guys who came up with this crazy idea of doing this every week. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Sash, if he, he'll, he'll come back. Thomas, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, I'm a webmaster at the German uh, TC forum. Uh, to see in the German Webmaster Forum, I uh, mean. <laughs> Vince? Um, TC in the uh, English Webmaster Forum. And with some. Consultant over here in Daytona Beach. All right. So we got people all from all over the world and things like that. So first thing I want to talk about today, before we jump into any other questions or anything like that, was to see what your guys' thoughts of, of the uh, new game that Google came out with for, um, you know, basically to gather a whole ton of maps and data information, which I don't think a lot of people realize, Ingress. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is your guys' thoughts on it? It looks pretty cool. I want to play, but I'm still waiting for an invite. I played it earlier. It's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, has anybody else played on it yet but me? No. Oh, okay. No. Um, so I was lucky I got a beta invite this morning. Um, when I woke up, there was one waiting for me. Um, so basically it allows you to do a lot of geotagging. It, it, it's different. I can't really explain it. I mean, I could spend an hour probably explaining it, um, of, of everything you do. It, it is kind of unique. It is interesting. Um, I suggest go and check it out. Um, try to get an invite. Uh, if you can. Um, I don't have any invites to give out right now, um, so that, that's a bummer. Um, Sash, you're back. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Uh, yeah, hi. I'm Sash. I fix websites. How's it going? Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, we started talking about uh, the, the game Ingress that Google came out with and launched today, or yesterday, I, basically. I, I got my... Sash. Sash froze. See what happens when you play a game? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. what happens. So um, he'll probably have to bounce and then he'll come back. So, um, so yeah, that, I think that is really interesting. I think that the location and geographical data information that Google's going to scrape from people playing a game that allows people to it's kind of like Foursquare, but it's different. It's, it's like Foursquare and then like modern, call it you know, Call of um, whatever the video games I, I don't play them. Call so, of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty and, and Modern Warfare and all that type of stuff combined is what it seems like to me. So I am not a gamer. I'm an SEO. I'd rather sit around and optimize websites and play video games. <laughs> I hope that's not too pathetic. So, um, yeah, that's just what it is. So you're saying so, you liked it? Um, yeah, for the for the beginning part, I do like it. Um, for me. It works a lot better. I hope they integrate it well with Google+. Plus. Um, if not, um, you know, I can see people, the nerds, I would say, um, it's, it's going to challenge them to, to want to, you know, do different things and interact. But if they start linking things together, I think that there could be some very valuable things that are pulling out of it. Why Google came up with a game like that? I think it, personally, I think it's for data, you know, gathering uh, for yeah. geolocation. Uh, That's pure and simple. So, yeah. I don't know. If any of you have any thoughts on it, or if any of you guys get an invite and are able to play it uh, this week, maybe we can talk about it in the next couple weeks and, and see what your guys' thoughts are as well. So, uh, let's delve into it, though. Does anybody have any questions, or anybody want to talk about anything we went over uh, last week, or anything new that's come out, or any website issues, or anything like that? Well, maybe I got a piece of information that John Miller uh, talked about in today's. Uh, noon webmaster hangout in German. 
And uh, I had the question, uh, I wondered why my, um, the count of uh, pages with URLs blocked by my robot's text uh, decreased so uh, um, noticeably. And um, from about 300 to more or less 60. And uh, John said that they give up on crawling URLs after a certain time if they see that it's forever. And uh, they don't try again, and the, the, these URLs might be taken out of the count of uh, URLs blocked by robots text. Hmm. Hope you get what I mean. Uh, I'm not a native speaker, but no, I, I think what you're you're trying to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying that Google will crawl the URLs. And then after a while, if they don't see any changes or you cleaning any issues up, then they'll just ignore them after a while themselves. So if you have a, a ton of 404 errors and things like that, then after a while, they're just going to ignore them. Am I wrong? Um, more or less, um, we, we have that indexing status. I don't know what it's called in English uh, in the Webmaster Tools. So I think he's talking about the, the metric that shows you the, the number of URLs that are being blocked and number of URLs that are... Uh, yeah, that's index, that's and that's they're that's basically that's throwing that's out that number once they've determined that those URLs can't be um, crawled again, which is kind of interesting because it kind of defeats the purpose of that metric because it's no longer something that is like the the pool of URLs is is shrinking and growing, and I don't know. I, I think that it kind of makes that number harder to interpret. Yep. Well, guys, you know that report of the. And the tool that it basically talks about a list of not selected in Webmaster Tools. Yeah. yeah. That seems always a lot higher than anything else. That might be included. You probably get some stats from there then instead. Uh, not selected is not just not selected from the current site, but is accumulated. Bands, it helps when you pull your mic down. <laughs> you complained about it being too loud and you could hear my breathing, so make up your mind. <laughs> I said the figure of not selected uh, is not just from pages or URLs on the current site, but is accumulated over time. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, like right now, I'm looking at one site that I work on, and um, they they just transferred over from one site to another site, and um, we've you know there's definitely an increase in 404 and 403s and a couple 502 errors as well, mm -hmm. and so now I'm having to go back through and clean those up individually. Um, so yeah, and I can and and I'm seeing all those errors pop up myself, which I've never had before until now. So now I can understand what some webmasters are, are getting when their site goes through a big change. Yeah, Matt, do you mind if we return to um, um, to what was being said earlier um, by uh, by Thomas, the German webmaster? Please, please. Um, your your paraphrase. I'm a, I'm 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 not being argumentative here, but your paraphrase did not agree with what I understood from him. So I just just you know not for the sake of. Uh, Proving who's right or wrong. Well, no, could, could we just yeah, could we no. just hear it properly? I understood uh, Thomas to be saying that um, uh, he was talking specifically about uh, URLs that are blocked in the in the robots.txt. If well, I'm wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. So that's it's not the, it's not 404s. No. It's not 404s. It's no errors. It's just. URLs being blocked, and um, uh, I know there's more than thousand, and um, uh, the the this indexing status overview showed me about 300 all the time, and it's go now going down to about 60. Right. I guess it's URLs that are not considered anymore because Google has given up. Okay, thanks. I have Welcome a, back, Sash. I have a question about that. Um, if if the URLs are not being crawled anymore, and let's suppose that they were of poor value anyway, then because of Panda, that actually should help you, I would think, because they're not hurting you since Google is ignoring them now. Is that possible? 
I never had any panda problems, so I can't say anything about it. But um, URLs are blocked in robots text are clearly URLs that uh, Google would not want to index uh, because they have too much, too little text or not much value for somebody who searches something. So I guess uh, it's better to keep them off the index. That's all. Welcome back, Sash. Let, let me give yeah, you an example. I think it's going, going to be one of those nights. I'd like to hear what Sasha's take on the on this. Uh, trouble is, my internet connection crapped out, and I missed half the discussions. I don't really know what we're talking about. Basically, the number of reported errors coming up in Google Webmaster Tools um, and types of things like that. So, um, you know, when, in Webmaster Tools where it shows, uh, well, let me pull it up real fast here. Um, we're talking more in reference. Where's that area? Anybody else want to help me out on this one? Index status, I think, is it under what's under, right, guys? Or is it under crawl yeah, stats? Yeah, it's under block? index status, and then you have to go advanced. Advanced, yeah. 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 So, and then you can select from there. You can select your total index, ever crawled, not selected, blocked by robots, or removed. Um, it usually always has total index not selected and blocked by robots automatically selected. And then you, if you want to select anything else, you're going to have to uh, automatically do it by hand. And then it will tell you by the date going back. So I'm looking at one of my profiles. I'm going back all the way through um, November 20th, 2011. So it covers an entire year of data where it will tell you anything ever crawled, total index not selected, blocked by robots, and removed. Um, share a screenshot here, right? Who's yeah. going to share a screenshot? All right, let me lock that on Barry. Search of the roundtable's uh, stats. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So, Sash, do you have any thoughts, or um, do you, or do should we go more in depth into it? You think? Let's 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 get in a little more. Okay, so Thomas, do you want to talk a little bit more about it? We can kind of use his, uh, Barry's um, site for an example. I think you're bl you're you're uh, muted, Thomas. Sounds like you're muted, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh, well, my my site is uh, very small and has a few visitors, but. Uh, um, the difference to Barry's uh, screen is that my site has interesting moves and uh, uh, part of um, uh, URL blocked by robots text. And um, wait a minute, I try to share it. Um, okay, do you see that now? Yeah, let me switch over to you so everyone can see your screen. Okay, there we go. Whoa. That's that's different. Okay, you, you'll see that uh, the kind of uh, URLs blocked by robots text is really going down from. Uh, um, wait a minute, what is here? We got uh, uh, 334, and uh, by now we have uh, 69. And that's pretty much different. Okay. I uh, see. The thing is, when it, when the robots got increased, the oh, it went away. Yeah, it looks like the total index numbers. Um, when the robots increased, the total n number of index also went up. Oh um, no, not really. Not the really. Blue, the blue line. The blue line. Yeah, the blue no, no. There's not much difference. Uh, there was a was a decrease, um, which I don't know what it caused by. Don't know. Uh, anyhow, it, it doesn't matter. It, the, the numbers are realistic. It, they're correct, but except of the robots text. So, what are your guys' thoughts? Let me let me throw something out there. What are your guys' thoughts for? Say you have a shopping cart section on your site that you have behind a login. So you're going to get a 403 error. Um, pop up when anybody you know when Google tries to index it. Do you guys think it's better to no index that via robots tag, or do you think it's good to um, you know just do a no index no follow on every page if you can do that? 
Yeah, I do the index no follow, right? I don't know. Eric, you? Um, I mean, From usually, yeah, I, I try not to use robots.txt unless it's like something that is uh, a spider trap. Um, so if it is something like a login or maybe even like the shopping cart, you might as well just block it from robot with robots.txt because you don't want the engines even like looking at any of the URLs there. Um, yeah. But if, if it's something where there are pages that you know could you know allow the the engine to crawl through, um, I would just no index. Like I would use either HTTP status, HTTP header, or or a meta no uh, no index. Yeah, I, I like the aspect of, of the meta, no index, no follow. I think it's cleaner. I think it's simpler. If you can roll it out site-wide, if you can't, and you have trouble with the CMS, um, then uh, I think just a robust.txt file input, just a line input, just to disallow that is probably the fastest and the quickest thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, the thing you need to remember with the robots is that um, ultimately that URL can still be indexed yeah. if... Uh, it, if it's blocked because they just don't know what's there. So um, that's also a use case to consider. That's yeah. true. So both sometimes would actually work. So, um, when in doubt, the answer is sometimes C. That's what I'm learning in my GMAT classes. Um, all right. So, um, Jack, I know you had, you, I think you had another follow up question on that. Uh, uh, I I just I can I think I misunderstood the last statement that was made, but now everything is a little bit clearer because you were talking about robots dot the robots dot tx file, and I thought you were talking about something that was being ignored by Google, but it, that ignorance or the <laughs> the uh, the being ignored was initiated by Google, and you were talking about something that was being ignored because it was initiated by the robots txt file. So that makes sense to me now. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. So Barry, you mind if I pick on you for a minute? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, so, O Grand Wizard of all SEO news. Um, what, what are what are some of the common things that you've been seeing lately that, um, and without saying panda or penguin, that have really started to affect webmasters? I know I know you're in the forums every day. You don't answer, but for most for the most of the time, I, I see when you do reply every now and again. But for the most part, you're just reading for for stuff, and so I wanted to get an idea um, more of, of what issues you're seeing because I know you're 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 scanning for issues and things like that. He's like so a helicopter. Without saying Panda or Penguin, that's yeah. the rule. A lot of discussion of disavow stuff, disavow links tool. Okay. Um, people basically saying it's not working for them. Um, <coughs> the SEO side, the webmaster side, um, it's hard to remove peg, Penguin or pen, Panda because um, everything, everybody, you know, you know, everybody blades Penguin or Panda for everything. Um, have, have many people blamed the EMD update? Not really, no. Not compared to Penguin or Panda. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've replied to some people that I think, hey, your issue might be a little bit more related to, you know, in the forum for me, and, and maybe maybe Vince can back me up on this, and, um, you know, that, hey, it's it's a little bit, you know, you're not going to rank number one because you own, you know, cars in Dallas, Texas, dot com, uh, really much anymore because there might be other people that are uh, quality that are around with you as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, outside of Penguin and Panda, EMD is small. People were talking about the page layout recently because uh, they updated that algorithm, but nobody really said they got hit by it, the recent algorithm update. I really saw nothing with that. Um, people, the main thing right now is this disavow link tool. People are trying it out and not going to get any response yet. Maybe it's too early. I don't know if you saw anything in the forums where people actually got a response from it. Really, they got like uh, they s did they see anything in terms of people getting benefiting from using it? I I haven't seen anyone. Has anyone else? Vince, you, you might see it more than I would, or maybe even Sash. I did a test on it, but I don't see anything yet. Yeah, and and that's the way. So, what else? Uh, what other trends do you see happening in the in the future, Barry? In the future, how far do you want to go ahead? 
Ooh, let's go. Two days. Two days. Let's, let's go like a week. Because <laughs> anything farther than that, you know, who knows? A week. Okay. Um... Don't oh, forget, there's the holidays <laughs> coming, so there's a not, 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 not a lot of stuff. No, you can do various 2013 projections. Right, you're not going to see much between, like, yeah, like, you're just going to say, you're not going to see much between Thanksgiving and uh, the end of the year, because Google typically stays away from that since Florida. How many of you guys have been around during Florida, the Florida update? That was actually right before me. That was uh, good. So you're doing it. Well, I've been doing it now for about, about five years. But Florida happened back in 2003, 2004? What? When Florida happened, what, 2003, 2004? It was Thanksgiving 2003. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I know where I was in 2003. I was uh, in the military uh, going, this sucks. <laughs> More important things than pay, pay to pay to Florida. Yes, yes. I was, I was worried about seeing my family and all that good stuff. It's crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Uh, we might have some other questions here. If any of you guys have any other questions, go ahead and throw them in. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and start talking about some questions and issues like that. Yeah, and I'm gonna start. yeah go ahead, man. Um, just, just to round off uh, the point that you touched on earlier about the number of um, URLs um, that um, Webmaster Tools is reporting as blocked. It's, it's very important to, to interpret the number correctly. It's not the total number of URLs on your site that are blocked by uh, robots. It's the number of URLs which Google routinely attempts to crawl, but then is blocked. It finds links or reasons why it wants to crawl them. It checks the robot text, sees that they're blocked, and it's alerting you to that fact that they're blocked. If, over a period of time, for whatever reason, Google decides there's no point in us keep, keep trying those URLs. They've been blocked for years. It's a permanent feature. So the figure is still um, more or less accurate. I mean, none of these figures should be regarded as accurate. It's, it's about trends. It's about directions of movement. And it's about specific uh, URLs or groups of URLs rather than actual numbers. We should never look for an accountancy type balance sheet, you know, where everything adds up to uh, to, to be correct. But the, but that figure is perfectly logical that that number should go down um, if if you have URLs which are blocked. But it's not the total number of URLs that are on your site that are blocked. It's the number that Google routinely attempts to crawl and then finds that they're blocked. Yeah, wow. I guess that's correct. Um, and I also guess um, and there are some other issues, maybe, maybe, because uh, since July, uh, Google reported that no URL has been blocked by robots text, and this is definitely not true. Um, there have always been URLs blocked, and uh, since 2004, um, that's some years now. And uh, um, but the report uh, starts at uh, the mid of July, maybe, you know, saying there were some blocked URLs, and uh, afterwards uh, they decreased because Google did not try to crawl them anymore, and they didn't try before. Um, all those URLs blocked by robot text we're not crawled by Google. Google is uh, a gentleman in some way. But again, although it says on the on the screen um, robots.txt, I don't believe that it really is just the robots.txt. It will also include the number of URLs which are blocked by the X robots tag. Uh, uh, no, uh, no index. Well, maybe not. Maybe not because it's no index. Maybe it's not crawl. Yeah. So I'll take that back. Sorry. Yeah, but but, but well, okay. if 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 in um, if we were talking about no indexing, then it you know it wouldn't just be what's on the page. It could also be a response. Therefore, you might have a hundred PDF files, which you are you are not allowing Google to index. 
by using the you, you are using the X robots tag to, to block them, but there's nothing in the document that blocks them, and there's nothing on the page that blocks them. They're still there blocks. Right, right. Really right, Vince. Um, I have some PDFs, but uh, there's only very few PDFs uh, that are blocked with, with uh, X robots tag. Very few, and um, okay. it could never make such a difference. You know what I mean. No, and there's not much links, and uh, they're not publicly reachable. The links to these PDFs, and uh, so I guess uh, it's not that. Okay. So we got kind of an interesting conversation going on in the chat that no one who is watching can actually read. Um, and uh, Baruch and Eric, you guys want to bring that out and start talking about it, or you just want to keep it in the chat so no one can talk about it? Well, no, I just thought, can uh, sites like Amazon get hurt and people like that? Uh, Matt, Matt, if they don't agree to talk about it, I think you should suspend them from the uh, group. Okay, go ahead, Vince. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Bert. No, I'm just thinking, like, can the big boys get hurt because of this? What's your take on that, Vince? No, no, I'm listening. Well, I mean... Anytime you, like, whenever I did anything with any large site, like eHow, yellowpages.com, yeah. com, like, we almost never touch our robots.txt. Almost never. Um, just because it's so dangerous. It's, you know, it's the chainsaw uh, where you want a scalpel. Um, so yeah. most of the time we're using, like, either meta, no index, or um, throwing stuff in HB headers if it's a PDF or image. Uh, in cases where we don't want um, the engines to, to index something. We largely allow the engines to crawl whatever they want to crawl, unless it's feeding into our crawl budget. Um, the stuff that, that we see in Google Webmaster Tools, um, you know, to, to Vince's point, it, it is more for trends, and I only use it for that. I don't really use it as actual reporting. Uh, most of the time, I'm actually looking through my logs. Um, I have a list of... So basically, every week what I do is I go through all our logs, I look at all the um, IP ranges that uh, claim to be um, to have a user agent of Googlebot. Um, I then do a reverse DNS lookup on all those IPs to validate um, what IPs are Google and not. And then I look, uh, and then I filter by IPs to figure out um, what Google's been hitting and what are their 404ing and um, what uh, are they accessing anything that they shouldn't be accessing. Um, and that, that's really how you should approach it. You should really use uh, your log data to really figure out where Google's hitting and what they're not hitting. Um, for instance, like yellowpages.com, um, what we noticed was uh, Googlebot initially was coming in and they were starting from the letter A uh, at attorneys in Alaska and recrawling the whole alphabet from, uh, you know, from the very beginning every single day. Um, so they were never really getting into uh, plumbers in Plymouth just because uh, they would just come back and recrawl from the, the top of the alphabet. So we restructured our XML sitemaps and we restructured our um, you know, on-page linking structure so that the engines could get to the, the areas that they needed to get to. Um, so, I mean, things like, uh, you know, definitely crawlability is something that um, can hurt a, a large site just because something like eBay and Amazon I mean, they have so many new products in such a large marketplace. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if Google can actually crawl everything. Um, you know, it's one of those sites where they may not ever actually really see everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to Barry's point, you know, you have a, a, a crawl budget. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> Ser server data is huge, and I think, you know, like I'm... I'm I'm in a fight right now to try and get all my server data. Did you guys my watch, watch my server video? I have not. I have not. Go ahead yeah. and share that. And, and uh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be glad to watch it. But yeah, no, I think that server data is a huge thing that most SEOs either don't understand or they don't know about. And then when they do get the data, it can be very overwhelming, especially if your site is, is large. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of interesting things about that. And, and Eric, I don't think you talk. He said he's like, I talk too much. No, Eric, you don't. Um, you, you're good to go. Um, so, Sash, um, can you hear us? Yeah, just about. 
Um, I, was saying, I was talking to somebody the other day who said Eric Wu's forgotten more than I'll ever know. You know, it's just one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a high compliment. Uh, Sasha, I mean, uh, I know you got a lot of sites that you manage and you work on server data. Um, you know, how often are you getting into the server logs? The logs. Um, I'm actually having trouble getting the logs for for a lot of places. Certainly, some of the bigger sites. Um, I've got I've got stuff where the logs are like split over four different servers, and I'm having to collect everything. Um, it's it's a monumental chore at times, you know. But yeah, it's it's daily. I mean, it's it's like almost breakfast cereal, isn't it? You know. It really is. Um, we we somebody brought up PDFs earlier, and uh, I was I was digging around the other day, and. Um, redoing PDFs for, for the site that I'm working on right now. And how many of you know that you can actually do canonical URLs for PDFs? Is anybody? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you haven't, if you don't know that, you should really go check it out. Um, j just search canonical for PDF um, and it will come up and, and you can find it that way. Um, I, I strongly suggest, I think it's a it's an overlooked thing that a lot of webmasters and a lot of SEOs kind of forget to do. It is a little bit higher level stuff, but it can be done and I think it's pretty easy. Um, I figured it out in about a half hour. Um, I think it's a great thing to do. So, uh, The only thing to note with um, you know canonicalizing an HB header is that it's not supported by Bing. At least yep. Dwayne said that, yeah. in, I want to say like four or five months ago. I don't know if they've changed that. Since, but, you know, well, you know, I was looking at all my traffic from analytics, and, and I could see that basically like 85% of my traffic comes from Google, and just a few comes from Bing. So I'm gonna let Bing fall and die on the floor. <laughs> um, the way that I handle the PDFs, because uh, I, I I don't like uh, to have a a .pdf extension, uh, I just use a, a a mod rewrite in in the HT axis. And so um, the, 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 the document might be called price list and then a date and version 16.3. Um, but in the, in, the, in the published URL, it's simply latest prices. The actual document behind that, um, uh, you know, may, will, will change from time to time. It doesn't matter. But the URL remains nice and constant, nice and neat. And the fact that it doesn't say .pdf on the end is not a problem at all. Um, it, it works it works very well indeed. Agreed. So what else have we got to talk about here? Or do you, should we now delve into questions? Um, Eric had maybe had one or maybe Brooke or any of you guys got any questions? We got some and that link I shared with you guys in the very beginning. So there was one question that I thought was interesting. Um, one of the questions was, I don't want comments like thanks and good article to mess up my content focus. Does Google recognize the comment section and give it less value than the main content type of the page? Um, and if not, will it? Um, I, I just think it's, it's kind of interesting just because um, you know, comments are definitely a large part of the web, and um, definitely great content will have a lot of comments. And sometimes you'll actually end up ranking for um, the comments than you actually do the content. So I just want to thought see what everyone else's thoughts was. Mm. Uh, my, I have a question though to go along with comments, and and does Facebook comments as much as I hate them. Um, does uh d does Google index those comments? Yes. Well, yes. Well, though, that's my question. Like, the, depends on for larger sites. I've seen it index pretty well. Uh, okay. I don't know about smaller sites. So I did a com I did a comment on Donald Trump's. Uh, uh, I I don't know. He was saying that everybody was closed in New York when when the whole that Sandy happened. He came out and he was like, "I'm open." You know, so I, I put a comment there, and I wanted to see you know, how fast can this index, and in two days, there was the, it was indexed, so they, Didn't we really talk about it's working pretty good in terms of, uh, yeah, so they might go ahead and, uh, you know, index it all, but John Mueller 
commented about that twice about how user generated content and stuff like that, how you should handle it. I put some links in the chat room. Basically saying, you know, you have control over it, so make sure you make sure it's quality comments and not junk comments. And obviously in your, in your system you can actually say comments that are maybe <coughs> Maybe thumbs up or get a lot of votes could be indexed and stuff that is not quality can you actually probably not index like removed from the page somehow, I guess. I mean everything we know about like Google, like I mean the the page segmentation and and whatnot, I mean I, I think they I mean I think they have a pretty good idea of what um, you know where the comments are and what part of the page it's a part of and whether or not it's part of the content or not. So, um, yeah, I would say, I mean, I agree with Barry. Like, you should make sure your comments are, are pretty clean um, and providing a great user experience, not just spam. Um, just a quick question. Uh, just wanted to move along to authorship. What do you guys, what is your take on that? I asked John about how important, uh, and Barry was there as well, like how important, for instance, you know, like if Madonna writes something, you know, and then, uh, and then somebody else comments uh, or writes a story, uh, pretty much to what she wrote, but switches it around, you know, like uh, what do you, what do you got? What what's your take on authorship in general? I love authorship, love it. I love Relicos author. Awesome. I love Relicos awesome. 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 publisher. Yeah, it's I love them both. They're great. Authorship, authorship markup is great. Because it takes up more space, it puts a photo there, photos mm -hmm. equal more credibility, users see the photo and they go, oh, this one has an author. You really photo think so? It. Have you tried that? Because I know so, because really? I, I, yeah. I have yeah. asked people and they're like, oh, I, only, I, I love clicking on the ones with photos because I trust those. And I'm like, it's just like a newspaper, okay? When you open up that newspaper and you see the photo of the author right beside the, the, the main headline of the post, yeah. for some reason you think that you, that post has a little bit more credibility because you can see the writer's face. Yeah, highly agreed. Highly agreed. It's it really in the way Matt says, uh, you, when you see a post and you have a good um, profile picture, which is very, very important. You, you need a really good profile picture that is trustworthy or looks like that, yeah? And uh, people are likely to click on such a link rather than on any other link. So basically, you're saying that the photo should be a very, very nice photo, not just some like, you know, should, you should do a nice, make a nice, do a nice close-up. Yeah. Definitely need a, a trustworthy picture that shows your face, yeah. and um, where people might believe or uh, that what you say is true. Right, right. Because I have a customer, and he's you know I I started one disease in one industry where I started posting the authorship as soon as it came out, and then bang, you know, uh, five days later everybody else started you know climbing up the ladder. So. What I'm saying is, uh, my customer right now is not seeing any huge ROI on that in a very, very busy industry. So I don't know. Because what, what? Okay, the customer is telling me, you know, should we take the photo down? Should we take the photo down, and would that generate, you know, more ROI rather than? Putting the photo back up, so we're kind of like we're testing. I tested it. I took it off, put it on, took it off, put it on. No, I took I took photo off and then I put it back up and I tested a few different photos of myself. The one with me with the mohawk actually gets the most traffic. Really? So it's not it's not even just having a photo and not having a photo. It's having the right photo. Right. And so you're gonna need to test those different photos. The one with me is the mohawk with my aviator sunglasses on. Yeah. It gets the most clicks. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah, agreed. Uh, it depends on the correct photo. It must Matt, be a you need to bring back the mohawk. Can be, can be recognized very well in small size. Oh boy, am I Okay, screwed. so what I'll do is I'll take the kind of face that breaks the camera. Off. I'll, I'll <laughs> take the photo off and uh, remember I told you about that thing with the the photo standing with some circle rather than having an actual square. I'll change it to a circle and see how that works. Again, and I'll do something like really close of something really. 
I mean, already I got know. emails. I already got emails about my profile picture because people uh, asked me where it was taken and uh, that it looks rather good. It doesn't. Yeah, very really, nice. But I, mean, I really like it. it. Looks like uh, autobiography. Well, it's yeah, just like uh, it's just my like daughter called it. When you're sharing yeah, images of cats, you get more followers. Okay. If you and, and Sasha and I have tested this out. The more images of cats you share, the more followers you get. And and I've and I've proven that. And so when I see that that works, I'm like, okay, you know, people re are responsive to different things. With me with my mohawk picture, I get more comments and more people out saying, oh, nice hair, that's awesome, than I do with, you know, with a shirt and tie on. Yeah, I, I highly agree because uh, it depends on the people, on your audience. And if your audience uh, believes that the face you show or the way you show yourself um, present yourself is uh, matching their ex expectations, uh, then it's pretty good and uh, the conversation will be higher. And mine's for a motorcycle cool. website. And so for the motorcycle website, the Mohawk and the aviator glasses look stylish to a motorcyclist. They're not going to yeah. care about a guy in a shirt and tie. They're looking for a dude who's rough. <laughs> okay, I really appreciate it. So uh, I'll do the test and I'll let you know, guys. Uh, I think. Yeah, I would test it like on four or five different profiles of different people that you have, if you can. Um, and then I would, um, you know, if, the more images that you can test, the better. Because if you can do that, I think you're going to be more spread out. And anybody who's watching, test, and you're using Rel equals publisher or Rel equals author, you know, very change your your image uh, and test some. Um, you, you might see a drop in traffic. You might see a rise in traffic. You know, and, and see which one works better for your audience. If you're talking, if you're a, a law firm, well, then I would expect you to have a shirt and tie and maybe a jacket on in your picture. If you're a motorcycle one, I'm looking for the mohawk and tattoos. Um, you know, it, it's different types of things will be receptive to different people. You know, even I guarantee a gangbanger is not going to be looking for a law site and is not going to want to choose, a, you know, a lawyer with tattoos he, and all kinds of stuff. He's looking for a lawyer and a shirt and tie. So it really is, a, you know, down to your uh, your demographic of what you're looking for and who's looking for you. Okay, yeah. Uh. So, yeah. So, you know, it's all about style. It's, it's about seeing what's best and what works, you know, and, and you got to test it out. And that's the thing, you know, I mean, everybody always talks in, in Google about testing images and, and, and testing stuff, but we never test our own image. It's pretty well, I, I think it, totally with, anything, with anything in SEO, I mean, there's too many people out there who aren't doing enough testing. And um, with besides just real, real authorship, like, you should be testing everything, like, what works for one person's site that you know you might read on on a particular blog may not necessarily work for your particular audience or your uh, your site, and Google might treat it completely differently. So, should always be testing. Always, exactly. Um. All right. So let's see. If we have any other questions, or should I go ahead and pick one out? Uh, Matt, did you uh, pick up on the one about um, exact Mac to? The uh, text matching on internal links versus external links. I did not. Okay. Do you want to take that? Uh, go ahead. Oh. It sounds like you already got it. No, I'm just trying to find it. I just had to nip outside to say goodbye to my daughter who is returning to her base, um, which is many miles away. Um, sorry about this. I thought no you'd problem. say get, I thought you'd say get in line, wait your turn. Um, the question is: Do internal website links with exact match keyword anchor text hurt a website? Um, I think what lies behind this question is that um, there has been a lot of talk that uh, exact match keyword anchor text with external links in external inbound links um, is uh, seen as uh, spammy and uh, manipulated. And um, the only comment I wanted to make here is that I think that it's perfectly OK um, it, within your own site, within your own domain, where the, uh, the keyword 
the link text that's being used is appropriate, is relevant. The fact that it's an exact match keyword is not a problem uh, with internal links unless there are so many internal links that for some reason, you know, creates an, an idea of it being, again, some kind of scheme, some kind of manipulative thing. But it's quite different from an external inbound link that has, where, where you're seeing links from supposedly thousands of different sites, all put there by thousands of independent uh, content authors and webmasters. Um, and remarkably, they all have exactly the same link text. So I think it's the, it's the sameness um, is unbelievable. It is strong evidence that the external links were manipulated, were organized. They were not natural organic links. But the same argument cannot be used, the same evidence cannot be used uh, with regard to your internal links because obviously the linking between your pages on your own site will be organized. And you know, there's nothing, no reason why it shouldn't be organised. That's my point of view. Thank you. Please feel right. free to disagree. <laughs> All right, real quick, uh, uh, we got a couple people who are going to jump out, and then some other people. If you want to go ahead and jump in, feel free. Um, so, see you later, Barry. Thanks, Basam. Um, yeah, I know Bart. Yeah, he just too. and you're leaving too. So, if anybody no, else wants bye. to jump, see you, man. Uh, so if anybody else wants to jump in, feel free to jump in, and uh, uh, we'll see you guys later. We're just here, so thanks, guys. All right, Bart, you had a question. No video. Um, I actually know Bart. I used to work with him. So, Bart, what's your question, man? You there, Bart? Bart's got no mic. Oh, Bart, I hate it when you have no mic. Very quiet. Are you guys there? There we go. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I've got this client, and uh, I've done so many things with Panda on him, and I just can't seem to get it to pop back up, you know? Um, just wondering, uh, I've gotten rid of the gateway stuff, I've done, uh, let's see, tons of stuff on the content, written new content. Um, Does he have internal search on his website? Yes. And have you removed the, were they creating individual pages when they would go and do a search? Yeah. And have you stopped that from hap from being indexed? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's been, uh, I took that out uh, two years ago. Okay. A lot of people forget to do that. But uh, I was just curious, is there, um, is there like a checklist? And I, I mean, the only ones I've been able to really make is... Um, off of the Google quality uh, blog post from, uh, you know, what was it, about a year now. And then um, I just can't, I don't know, I've, I've made others pop. I just can't seem to make this one. It's really annoying me. Can you share the URL with us? Sure. Okay. What, uh, if you want to go ahead and share that with us, uh, keep it in mind that this is recorded and posted on air on YouTube, so uh, anyone will be able to find it. So go ahead and what's the URL? Uh, Hammond.com. Hammond. So if anybody who's watching wants to go look that up themselves, Hammond, H A M M O N D.com. Um, postcards, greetings. Did you do a lot of like press releases for this? Um, Honestly, I haven't done any link building for him for about two years. Okay. Uh, he got hit by Panda, and I um, and uh, they called me because they trust me. So, but they, he but might have a lot of press lot releases. Of press releases. I haven't uh, looked into that actually. Is that a? Because I'm pretty sure it was it happened on the 27th. You know, it had the 66, 70 percent drop in traffic. Uh, it had all the Panda look and feel to it. Uh, and you're saying the 27th of October? Uh, September. September. That's right, when the latest Panda and the EMD update came out, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there should be another Panda since then. There's a Panda every week. I'm testing my audio because I have on a different headset. Can you guys hear me okay? Loud and clear. No, not at all. Okay. You sound great. 
Testing, super fun. Baruch, what are you posting in the uh, chat? So Bart, what, what kind of, what we say is the content? Is it just largely just an e-commerce site where the content is just the descriptions of each of the cards or do they have uh, content beyond that that I can't see? Uh, they do have a blog, which I think they've hidden somewhere now as far as... Yeah, it's, it's in the footer. Um, yeah. while, while we're on the footer, I'm not really impressed. Yeah, I'm not either. I always feel like when you throw a paragraph of text, you know, two scrolls down under everything, that you clearly do not intend any humans to read that, right? Right. So get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, is it really helping? I mean, otherwise, I would say put it up, you know, right underneath the hero image, you know, right, bef right before the we can help you and the gifts and press for less. I, w I would put it right where that block is. I mean, the, the online chat, I mean, there's already a, lo a live chat thing up above, and, you know, I, w I love how they have the prompt professional and personal, you know, our, our clients say, well, I'd hope they'd be prompt prof you know, professional and personal. If not, I don't want to work with them ever. You've got a load of directory links, too, in your profile. Absolutely. Lots of low-quality directories. Have you tried cleaning any of those up? I mean, I see a few thousand links, and they're almost all low-quality directories. It looks like Bart left. Oh. Uh, hopefully, he'll keep watching. Uh -oh. um, so we scared I'll, him off. I hope. No, I don't think so. Uh, I'll, I'll reach out to him. I know him. Uh, he lives just a couple miles from me. So one of the other things that um, when you're thinking about, if I mean, it might be Penguin as far as like the the link profile, but if you're looking at Panda, one of the things to take a look at is where your traffic is going. Um, if you're, uh, if you see that cliff where things fall off and it's at the article level or at the individual deep link level, um, that's probably, I mean, Panda is across the board, but um, nowadays it, they're getting a little bit more specific with it. If you see like a lot of your traffic moving away from your individual pages over to your, uh, your top level pages, like your category pages and stuff, um, that's something that you'll probably want to investigate further. Yeah, I'm also noticing that he's got like a verify v1 on almost every page, and I'm wondering what that verify code's for. Bart, he's probably, probably, probably just made it for the last page, but he's put it in a template. See, so this is it. If it's part of the template, it just gets pumped out everywhere. I've seen that loads of times. Yeah. Oh God, view state. Uh, you should tell your developers to move view state out. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, excess code in there. I think that can be cut out. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, Bar, I, I think you got a, I think got a lot of issues. I think, I think one thing that might hug you the most is if you can. Uh, hold on, let me. Vance, I'm gonna mute you for a minute. Okay. Um. So, so Bar, I, I think one of the things I think that would help you a lot is if you were to jump into the forms, um, and you know, or reach out to, to in the forms to us, so that way we can start digging through the site, um, a little bit easier than in here. Um, you know, I think the forms is where you need to be. Um, Sash, um, you know, Vince, Ashley, if you if you want to back me up on that or not. Um. No, totally, absolutely. And as far as it goes, I mean, if if you, especially Webmaster Central, it gets pretty busy at times. If you if you open a thread, um, just kind of follow follow the guys in the forum on G Plus as well, and just notify them of the thread so they can go and have a look directly, <coughs> rather than finding it random chance, you know. Agreed. Hey Bart, there's also what appears to be hidden text. You have large paragraphs near the top of the the content, but you can't actually see the content on the page. It looks. I don't know if you're doing a. Oh, you, I see. You're doing a hide with the the read more. That's pretty spammy, dude. Yeah, I <laughs> I would not do that, Bart. That, that's me either. 
Yeah, I would get rid of the read more. Just put the content up there. Um, I don't think you need to have like the college for samples or place to order, you know, phone number thing on there. You can get rid of that sentence. Um, but yeah, I would be very careful with that read more. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, okay, so, so next week, oh, go ahead, Bart. You guys are awesome, and I really appreciate all your feedback, and I, I got a, a little disconnected there for a bit um, when you were speaking earlier, Eric, and, uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to going back and watching it, but um, I, I, it's interesting, I, uh, you, guys, you guys are awesome, I didn't notice all those things, um, thank you very much. No problem. That's that's one of the nice things about having a, a bunch of TCs and high level SEOs in here that can can dig through your site. And so, thanks everyone for for being here. I always do appreciate everyone who joins us as well. Um, everyone brings some amazing quality to this hangout, which well, uh, we we really thank you for. We've been we've been doing this for a while now. I mean, what is this number twenty two, twenty three? Yeah, it's something. almost six months. Something like something that. Like that. Uh, so I think we've, we've helped quite a few people during that time. That's some interesting discussions. We we have had some really interesting ones. All right, so we only got a couple minutes left. Um, um, Matt, can I just point out one extra thing, please just do. very briefly, very quick? Uh, it's an it's uh, an ASP site, and they should check for uh, uppercase, lowercase sensitivity. Ooh, that's a good. Call. On the URLs. Copy that, Bart. Yes, thank you. Um, those should redirect. But I'll take a look at them again. Yeah, and Bart, if you if you do have any issues, one of the nice things is you can always go to the forum, um, and you can ask questions in there. Anyone can go to the forums and ask questions. Um, I strongly recommend it. Um, you know, we might not cover everything in here, and you might have to go a little bit more in depth in the forums, but you'll get a little bit more information. So, um, actually, uh, it can be tough a lot of the times, but it's usually really productive and, and sort of. Uh, helpful. Yeah, I mean, Ashley, she she was helping someone out earlier, and she sent me a thing to to go and look and, and come to find out. I think the guy he was doing a WordPress install, and I think he corrupted it with a bunch of extra plugins that he didn't need or he put in there. Um, and so I I spent you know a little bit of time working on that, and you know you you'll get the help you need in the forums, and that's the awesome thing. And you know you just can't always expect it to get it instantaneously. Sometimes you got to wait a day or two. Um, you know, and sometimes it doesn't hurt to go back in and just ping it to make it go back up to the top because it can get lost in all the amount of people who are in the forums. So you no, might have to have a thick skin in the forum too. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, especially tough, on Fridays. <laughs> especially when Ashley and Jennifer are around, but you know, you get some tough love. <laughs> I always love it. How can I put my image on Google? Uh, have you Googled it? <laughs> The person who did the let me Google that for you domain, love it. That's my new favorite tool. Mine too. Oh, and the, I use that on my wife and she gets angry. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, are we going to do this next week? It is Thanksgiving next week. Um, I, I would say, I mean, Matt and I are going to be at the Plex next week. I would say. No, no, no two three, weeks, two weeks. Oh, or two three weeks, weeks, three oh, weeks. Oh, yeah, hell, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Houston. Damn, right, yeah. Um, getting my dates mixed up now. Um, I don't know. I can I can do it. I don't know how, how many people are going to get for it, but you know. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll send out I'm an invite for everyone. It. I'll send out an invite. See, see what response we get and take it from there. Okay. I'll send out an invite for everyone who wants to join, and then um, yeah, and then I know that um, we'll be going to the Plex for um, for a day, and then. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can we can really build this out. Maybe while while we're there, we can get some more Googlers to start joining us. I know John is probably watching right now. He makes comments and stuff like that on the uh, the threads and stuff. He's uh, going to be warning everybody to stay away from us. Yeah, I know he does. <laughs> we just need to get him, we just need to get him to come to come and 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 hang out and and uh, and join us and and Miley again because she was with us for a while and then she left and then if we can get. Uh, Get old Mr. Cuts to come and join us for for an hour one day. I think that'd, that'd be, be awesome too. See so. if we could get John Miller to the Plex. That'd be cool because he knows where all the good eats are. Um, you know. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna close it down. Uh, thanks so much, and have a great weekend. All right. You guys take it easy.